What I really need is something with a little bit of flux on it. Coated wire makes the best makeshift welding rod. Oh yeah, this will work. These are perfect. Just need the right one. Oh yeah, exactly what we're looking for. Okay, we're back as promised for the part two of the Willet Weld series. We just got back from Walmart with a whole bunch of new items. Let's show you what we're working with. On today's episode, we have tongs, garden fencing, a toy car, and a burger press. All right, now that we got our contestants for this round, we're gonna put some welds on this plate and see which one comes out on top. So first up, we're gonna start off with the tongs. These are an excellent replacement for welding rod because you can get two welds in one pass. Typically, you'll just set the tongs to whatever distance apart your welds are, fire it up at 120, and make two welds. Let's get it done. Awesome, so we got two beads and we can still use these tongs for when we go to our barbecue later. Up next, we have our garden border. This makes an excellent welding rod because it has this little coating on it that works as a flux. It's made out of wire, so it'll be perfect. Only downside to using a garden border is that you have to do a little bit of work to it before you get started. So if you haven't seen part one, you can find it right here. If you have, you know in the first episode, we used these pliers to make a weld. Now they're going to assist us in getting this rod ready for this next weld. Awesome. Whenever I use garden border wire fences to weld, I typically set the machine to 90 amps. That seems like a good starting spot. So let's see if we can grow some beads. stacking dimes and growing beads. As you can see, garden wire works incredibly well, not just for bordering your garden, but also for stacking dimes. All right, up next we got this toy car. These make excellent welds because of their metal body. Let's get this thing unboxed and see what we can do. So these little guys are pretty fast, so we're gonna hit the brakes and turn the machine down just to keep this thing on the plate. Toy cars can be really hard to get in your stinger, so after a couple hours of struggling, if you can get that thing jammed in there, you can definitely make a weld. Might even take a little bit of modifying. All right, we got the green light, now let's go burn some rubber. Our car got in a little bit of a fender bender, so I'm gonna stop welding for a little bit and be a mechanic and see if I can get this thing fixed back up. Oh yeah, that looks nice. I think it's ready for the Indy 500. All right, let's see if we can recover from that little pit stop and get a weld on this plate. We drove it till the wheels fell off and we weren't able to get much of a weld out of this thing. Okay, last but definitely not least, the Lodge Burger Press. Now this thing weighs a ton. It's probably gonna fall off the stinger, land on my foot, break me into a million pieces, but let's see how it welds. We're gonna need everything that our ESOB ES300i can produce for this one. All right, we got the ESOB maxed out. We're gonna put some pressure on this press and see if we can get it to make a weld. Awesome thing about the Lodge Smash Burger smashing iron is that we got plenty of material so we don't have to worry about running out anytime soon. So quick recap. So right here's the tongs. I'm a little bit rusty but you get proficient with these tongs and you can cut your workday in half. These ones are definitely going in second place just because of how efficient they are. Right here we have the garden fence wire. It actually did pretty good. In fact, if you look closely, you can see that it actually stacked up some dimes, which I thought was pretty impressive for the garden wire. It's definitely getting first place. Uh, right here is where we crashed and burned the NASCAR. We have nothing but a little bit of residue that you can move around. This one's definitely getting last place, so this one will be in fourth place. 
Right here we have the burger press. One of the great advantages to a burger press is that it has a lot of material and that makes it so you don't have to go through all the work of switching out your rods all day long. So this one's definitely gonna get third place. So there you have it. You guys asked and we delivered part two in the Will It Weld series. So keep the comments coming. We saw lots of awesome ideas. If you wanna do a part three, let us know and we'll see you next time.